isometric rooms. They're kind of awesome. They can be cute, they can be realistic, they can be small, or they can be gigantic. The possibilities are limitless. Hi, I'm DC, aka Little Dude of the God, and I'm here to present the exhibit that isometric rooms are awesome and how to make them awesome. They'll turn out so awesome, you'll literally try to bone them, especially the beginners. For all the non-beginners out there, these are the renders I'll be breaking down in this video and I'll share some life-changing tips and tricks I learned while making them. Life-changing tips. They literally change your life. So, hold on to your socks. But if you are a beginner though, here's my pitch for why you should definitely make at least a few isometric rooms to improve your blender skill super quick. So you've made your donut and you've made your apples and you've learned the basics of blender. Maybe you even tried a hand or two at a few renders, but they don't look good. Probably. Maybe your models suck, or maybe your materials suck, or maybe your lighting is shitty. Whatever it is. What I think you're missing is just basic skills you didn't develop enough because you directly went for the big home run. You tried making a fantasy environment right at the beginning as your first render. If you ask me, that's a bit ambitious. And there's nothing wrong with that. But oftentimes what ends up happening is you make these initial renders and none of them turn out good enough. And then you lose the motivation and then you just stop. And that's where isometric rooms come in. They can be absolutely basic if you want them to, or they can be masterpieces full of character and detail as well. And it's great for beginners because you are staying in this nice and regulated canvas when making them. We'll break down each of these rooms one by one very quickly. It will be a little fast paced if you're a beginner, but this video is just to hype you up and show you the scope of this idea I'm pitching here. So watch this video till the end and let me know if you find this concept interesting enough. And if you'd like me to make a much slower paced step-by-step -step tutorial where I make an isometric scene from scratch so that the beginners watching can actually follow it along. So let me know if you're interested in something like that. For now, let's get to the first isometric room. This was a super minimalistic scene, just a simple bathroom. What I think gives it this nice aesthetic look is the subtle white and blue tones going on here. And then the blood is just dragging your attention to the story. Just subtle monochromatic tones. I think we don't do this enough as 3D artists, is actually use color palettes, like how 2D illustrators and designers do so often. I mean, there's a library of hundreds of color palettes on the internet, colors that people have figured out that go well together. So why are we not using them? And trying to figure this color combination thing ourselves. It seems kind of counterproductive. So try out using color palettes for once in your 3D scene, especially for isometric rooms. But obviously the colors don't work alone in a 3D scene. So let's look at the lighting of the scene as well. There are three area lamps pointing towards the room and one of them in the back illuminating the floor. You'll see none of them have a blue tint in the color. They're all white. It's the blue floor that's giving this render its cool temperature look. There's these two point lamps though shoved inside these two lights that have a slight blue color, which I think is also a nice touch. And finally, the bright light outside the window. I've applied an emission material to one face of a cube and kept it really close to the window. You can use an area lamp as well, or any light source for that matter. Just make sure there's no effect of that light outside the isometric room canvas, because that can look a bit odd. We want the attention of the viewer in the room and not outside the room, if that makes sense. Now lighting is a weird subject, I'll be honest. I've never seen a conclusive trick that's always worked in every scenario as far as lighting is concerned. I feel like all of us just put the light wherever and see what impact it creates and keep fidgeting around with the position, the strength, or the color until we get something we like. Whoa, what the fuck? This looks amazing. But all the lights are turned off and just the window light is kept on. Damn, this looks great. <laughs> you see what I mean? Just try out different things. Anybody out there claiming that they know how lighting works is just scamming you, okay? They don't know what they're talking about. Trust me. It's not true, but a lot of it is just trial and error in most cases, as far as I've seen, right? Or am I wrong? The only difference between a beginner and an expert would be the patience that they have for trying out different things. So don't just settle on the first thing that looks nice either. Try weird and wacky things and you just might find something unique. Also, there's this window shaped volume cube just beside the window to add a little bit of haze in that area. It's barely visible because I wanted it to be subtle, but if you would like, you can crank it up and see if it fits your taste. Now for the beginners out there, I'm not gonna lie, this room is not particularly simple to make. These shapes are hard to model 
but it's not impossible. It's just gonna take a little bit of time and effort. And here are two modeling tips that helped me out when I was a beginner. First is don't try to tackle the model as a whole. What I mean by that is break down the structure of the model into simpler shapes. Like for example, I would look at a model and get intimidated by the whole shape and it actually is just two beveled cubes on top of each other. And traditional 2D artists do it all the time when they learn to sketch. So I think we can learn that from them. The second tip is reference images. I used to have three or four reference images when I was starting out. And if we look at an expert's reference board, we will probably throw up because it will be so dense. So spend like a day just collecting good reference images alone. You know, I was so keen on getting better at modeling in the beginning that I used to go on Sketchfab, look for a toilet model and literally use that as reference because I got a 360 view of the whole thing. So try that as well. It sounds dumb, but it's crazy how effective it was for me. And trust me, if the models are nice, a lot of weight is lifted off the materials and the texturing stage. And I know for a fact that beginners hate materials. And this room is a testimony to that. The models are great, so I didn't have to spend any time on the materials. Almost all of the materials are just basic principle BSDF materials. Then for some final story touches, I texture painted these blood marks and used some blood pool decals. In case you don't know how texture painting works, I've linked a one minute tutorial by Blender Secrets in the description below. So check that out if you want to learn that. And just a final point, you might have noticed that the scale of things is a little off in this scene. That's just because this was a client project and as you guys know, clients want everything to be bigger than it has to be. But you should definitely not do that. Just follow the scale of real life, use a human model as a reference and design everything according to that. And that's it for this room. Here's a summary of what we can learn from this render. Give color palettes a try. Lighting tutorials are a scam. Yes, right? That's the biggest takeaway from this whole render. I'm kidding by the way, don't, don't, you know what I mean, you know what I mean, I don't have to explain myself. They're not a scam, but they're a scam. You get it, you get it. Then break complex models into simple shapes, use 3D models themselves as a reference, and finally, all clients have tiny dicks. Okay, on to the next room, the space bunker room. One thing that will immediately pop out in this render are the sci-fi decals. This is the sci-fi decals pack by Sanctus Library. It used to be $1, but it's now freely available. It's an amazing set of decals if you have a sci-fi scene or a model. So definitely save them for any future projects as well, if you want. So yeah, plays a lot of decals throughout the room. Next thing that grabs my attention is the combination of blue and red lights in the two different corners of the room. So let me show you how the lighting setup looks. You'd be surprised, but there's no light source directly towards the room from the outside. There are three lights far away in the distance to actually add some interest in the background. Then there's three very interesting spotlights just outside the window. If you look closely, they have three different shades of blue, which gives the window area a nice gradient effect, which I think looks really nice. Then there's this tube light just above the door that's adding a bit of light inside the room. And finally, the two red point lights near the staircase area. I think this combination of red and blue is pretty common in sci-fi spaceship interior scenes. So it looks perfect for this render, which obviously again came from a shit ton of reference images. Now one great trick for isometric rooms that most people don't know about is placing a bounding box surrounding the room. You can turn the camera visibility of that cube off and then what it does is it doesn't allow the interior lights to bleed out onto the outside floor and neither do the outside light bleed into the interior scene and gives the room this nice ambient lighting isolated from the environment around it. Try it out. Sometimes the bounding box helps, sometimes it doesn't. But it was a crazy trick I learned a while back and has helped me improve some of my isometric renders. Next, I wanted to talk about the importance of the Boolean modifier in this scene. This little bed corner, the door area, the latch on the left side, the grill on the right side, and then also the staircase area. There are Boolean cubes everywhere. I use the Wi-Fi modifier a lot as well, as you can see, for the window grills and for this floor grill. And then again in this staircase area, it's one of my favorite modifiers. I use it all the time, especially in sci-fi scenes. Now onto the materials in the scene. You wouldn't believe, but this whole room uses just one simple sci-fi panel texture and nothing else. That's why it all just gels well together. So don't unnecessarily use thousands of textures just for the sake of doing it. One other thing is the floor. It also has a scratchy plastic texture plugged into the roughness, which adds this nice rough texture that you can vividly see at the top of the render. So don't forget about the floor as well. It also deserves some love sometimes. But all these technical details aside, I think what really sells the look of this render is it looks pretty hospitable. Like I want to live in this room, even though it looks like a space prison cell, it still looks cozy. And then the assets like the books and the pipes and the laptop and the security camera and the stool and the blanket, they all add to the story of this room as well. 
Just little details that make it even more intriguing. That's it for this room. Here's a summary of what we can learn from this render. First, decals are awesome. Second, you can use different colored lights for creating dynamic lighting effects. Third is bounding box around the room to isolate the lighting. Fourth, when nothing works, use booleans. Fifth, just one simple texture can go a long way too. And sixth, story is more important than the render itself most of the time. I guess that's it for this room. Let's move on to the next one. The emergency room. Is this even okay for YouTube? I don't know. I guess we'll find out. Let's see what makes this room special. I think in my opinion, it is two things. As I said earlier in the video, isometric renders don't just have to be cute little rooms. They can be anything you want. And this room is an example for the other side of the spectrum. I think there's nothing much to say about this room other than that I spent a lot of time modeling a ton of assets that fit into the scene, leaving no place of interest empty. Focused a lot more on secondary and tertiary details for this one, probably more than the primary assets themselves. I can show you how the blood texture was made though. Not super complicated. I think I downloaded a blood material from the blender kit add-on, mixed it with the material of the floor, then drove the factor using a grunge texture, but not everywhere of course. I made my own mask and painted it in to control where the blood went. And that's it. Just followed similar principles that I mentioned before. Just two lights inside the room, a bounding box to stop the light bleeds, and then some lights around the environments as well. Okay, here's a summary of what we can learn from this trend. I think there are two points. First is secondary and tertiary details are equally as important as primary details, if not more. And the second is don't just limit yourself to non-photorealistic isometric renders. On to the last room. Let's go. We're speedrunning this shit. On to the Pulp Fiction room. So this one is a remake of that room from Pulp Fiction. And I think it looks the best among the four in my opinion. I guess that's what happens when you have a very strong reference image to follow. And on top of that, I think the green walls and the cream colored carpets were just meant to be together. It just looks perfect. I think the concrete texture on the walls is also adding so much to the scene. I love this balance that I found in all of these four renders of how they line both the realistic world a little and the not so realistic world as well. I think that's what makes them look unique. And finally, this dispersion of the light that falls on the wall it looks just beautiful and I had nothing to do with it. I just found an amazing realistic glass material from the blender kit add-on and it just produced this effect for me. And I'll take it. Sometimes it's just good to rely on other artists and assets that other people have created to make a good looking scene. And there's no shame in that. Just make sure you add something of your own. Don't get into the habit of just downloading assets all the time because there will be a day you won't find an asset you're looking for and you wouldn't have developed the skills to make it yourself either. So keep that in mind. But I think that's it. Just the same old lighting system I used before, the same old bounding box, the volumetric cube in front of the window, and really minimal lights inside the room. And it was done. Here's a summary of what we can learn from this render. Better the reference image, better the chances of a good render. Color palettes are awesome, again. Third party assets and add-ons are also great, but try to not always rely on them. And I guess that's it. These were the four isometric rooms. I think if you've never made an isometric render before, hope this video encourages you to. Again, especially if you're a beginner, just make five to 10 scenes and see how fast you grow in Blender. Seriously, right? If you fail, I will cut my mustache off. That's how sure I am. So just try it, please. Now to end it all, here's a compilation of all the ugly isometric renders that I've made over the years to balance out all the good things that I've been saying throughout this video. So enjoy at the expense of my misery. Mm-hmm.